Okay, we might get problems like this where you're either given a matrix or a series of equations and you're asked to find the value of one of the variables, in this case, z. So, so this, this is basically a, a matrix type problem on the praxis, right? This is the praxis 0061 math content test. So here, you want to find a re reduced row echelon form which is basically says a matrix where in the end you'll have these ones here for each variable and then by every leading one in a row, so the one furthest to the left, above it and below it there'll be zeros. And then for each one of these you'll be given a number x, y, and z. So we want to rewrite this this in a form like this, reduce row echelon form, and that'll tell us, you know, this is our x value, this is our y value, and that's our z value. So let's just look at the, um, how to deconstruct these equations so they fall into a matrix and then talk about two, two quick strategies to get this done. So what we do first of all is write down the coefficients. So the three coefficients for the x values will go in the first row and they'll be 2, negative 4, and 8. And then we have the, the y coefficients, we have 5, 3, and 10. Just all I'm doing right here is reading these coefficients, right? There's 5, 3, and 10. Now for z, there's, there's these two, but the third equation does not have a variable. And if it was in a different form, if the variable was over here, for example, I would add it back to this side to get them all in the same form. But it's not, so it's just going to be a 0, and then 5, negative 1, right? I'm just reading those off right there. And you can put a line here. You don't have to. But just to realize that the answers for each, the other side of the equation, excuse me, is 5 and 13 and negative 4. Now the idea of row, reduce row echelon form, to get it in this format right here, you take the values of one row, right, and then you want to rewrite it. For example, if this was a nice easy matrix to reduce, you look at the second row and say, well, well I want a 0 there. So what do I do? Well, I could use this number or this number to get rid of that. And the way I would do it, I mean, I would start by saying, well, leave the first row the way it is for now, right? I could get a 1 there by dividing everything by 2, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to deal with fractions right from the start. I don't want to divide 5 by 2 yet, right? Rewrite the first row and the third row. There they are. I'm not touching them yet. Deal with one row at a time. But the middle row, um, right here, instead of writing it as negative 4, 3, 5, 13. I'm going to write it as um, 2 times the first row, 2 times row 1, plus row 2. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I know that 2 plus, 2 times 2 plus negative 4 is 4 plus negative 4, or 0. And m remember, the goal of the form is to get a 0 there, so I'm going to do anything I can to get that. And if I did that, I would just do it to every number in the row, and then add to every number in this row now. So that's why I wrote down 2 times row 1 plus row 2. So what do I get? I get 0, right? 2 times 2 is 4, plus negative 4 is 0. Next, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. And then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus, plus 5 is 3, right? And then... 5 times 2 is 10, plus 13 is 23. Now we can keep going with these strategies, and, and actually this, this matrix doesn't look too friendly because um, there's, there's going to be lots of fractions to deal with. So how do we solve this really quick? Well, I would use my graphing calculator. In my case, I have a TI-89. And to do that, I'm just going to write the instructions here to help you out. To do that, I'm going to hit Apps. Right, There's the APPS button. And then once you have that, you're going to hit number six, so apps to number six, which is your matrix editor, right? That's your matrix editor, and once you are in that, you open a new file, so a new file, right, because you're creating a new a new matrix. The the type, there's could be a bunch of things to pick, and maybe I'll show this in another video. For type, you pick matrix, because we're dealing with a matrix. And it doesn't matter, I mean, whatever folder you want to put it in, or but give it a name. I want to call it X, right? Give, give the folder a name. 
and then you, you tell the dimensions. So here, when you're, we're telling you dimensions, uh, you also count the answers, uh, shooting the values on this side. So there are, are four full rows and three columns. And then, I mean, like on these calculators, it's great, especially with the test in terms of our time limit. Uh, um, excuse me. We, we're just able to plug these values in, and then we're done, right? It's amazing. Um, so once you plug all this into a matrix, you look for the command. It's under second math, right? After you enter the, enter the matrix in, second math, the command says RREF, reduce row echelon form, or if we just want reduced echelon form, look for that command right there. So all that, saying all of this, once, once you plug all this into the calculator, you can easily find the value of Z. And what it'll actually do is display the matrix just like this, but instead of X, Y, and Z, it'll display the three numbers. So once you plug all that into the calculator, it'll display for us uh, the reduced row echelon form. I'm just going to write that in here so you can check it for yourself. And if you want to actually go through the reduced row echelon form process, you just kind of keep adding different rows of combinations until we get something like this. And eventually we'll get that, and this is interesting to me, I didn't see this coming, that these matrices eventually will give us the values of negative 3, 2, and negative 1, which means that x is negative 3, y is 2, and z is negative 1. So that's our value of z. And if you look at other examples right here, same idea. I'm just going to show you how to set this up into a matrix. We take the coefficients for x, for y, for z, right? And then here are the other values that balance the equations. You take this, you plug it into the calculator by doing reduced row echelon form which again is just ones with zeros um, and you if you had another number here like two you wouldn't need to have zeros above it it's just the leading zeros but in this this is that's not relevant to our case right here right and then we have the x y z numbers so augmented matrix so now I mean once we plug this into the calculator by hitting apps and 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 matrix editor you enter the matrix in and do the reduce row echelon form command what you would just get as a reference is something like this right here. And I'm pretty sure all graphing calculators do some version of this computation. And once you, once you have this, all you have to do is read it. Now, I mean, this is test prep for the praxis. So I, I really stress trying to use the calculator to save time. Because all you, this, I mean, entering all this in takes a total of maybe one or two minutes, as opposed to going through these reduction form steps, which could take a long time. So here the value of y is right in the middle. y is equal to 2. x is equal to negative 3, and z is equal to equal to negative. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the other one that I had filled in. Let me go back. I still have that one up. Okay, so this time, sorry, when we enter this in the calculator, we get 1, negative 1, and, and, and negative 2. So here, sorry, y is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 1, and z is equal to negative 2. Okay, so I hope that helped.